one final area that we've heard a lot about in the past 12, 24 months is export credit agency funding, so particularly for internationals, international contractors uh, being asked to provide finance for a project their home government might um, underwrite a project. Is, is that something that you think is important? That, that has actually picked up steam in a big way um, over the last, uh, I would say, 36 to 48 months. And uh, we have, and, and it would become more and more uh, important and prominent going forward. Um, two reasons. One, uh, I guess, due to softness of uh, in the economies in, in the developed markets, uh, the ECAs from some of the European uh, countries are more, uh, you know, keen to support their uh, homegrown champions into these markets, and therefore, you know, the ECA financing is available. Do, as a do part you see of most it. of that coming from to um, the contractors from Europe for the contract, or, or do you think the Chinese are going to be major players? So you there? you have the you have the Chinese exam, you have the uh, Korean exam, you have uh, the European exams, uh, and 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 uh, from Italy, France, etc. UK has been extremely uh, competitive, and uh, it's it's clearly fits in very well. Uh, the only uh, uh, it's it's not it's not quick as as sponsors would like to have, or as yeah. as, as the other participants in the structure would want. Them to be, uh, but it's definitely worth spending that time because the kind of soft, uh, um, soft funding uh, rates that they come up with uh, definitely makes it worth its while. Uh, to a large extent, these ECS have been uh, limited to you know the mega projects um, and and, and yeah. strategic projects, but we also heard um, that a uh, lot of uh, interest is being um, generated as uh, some of the private sector uh, projects have been able to secure some ECA funding. It may be a small piece, it may not be the, the biggest piece and sits very well with the commercial tranche, but uh, there have been certain ECAs, depending on the import component, who have been able to uh, rope in the ECAs. So, we, so we've seen ECAs getting into the private in the infrastructure sector. side. Absolutely. And you're now beginning to see early signs in, the, in private sector projects. And do you think that will develop? Uh, I think that that if at all the right steps have been taken and yeah, you know uh, there has been few successes, uh, it would it would it would catch up. And what, and what will that mean for banks like Mashrat? Uh, it would uh, mean for a for a, for a bank like Mashrat. Um, Honestly, it's it's not uh, it doesn't come naturally to us. There are a lot of uh, international European banks who operate in this region who actually advise on CHC financing because they have done that in their home markets, right? So they are definitely uh, uh, at a at a pole position. Uh, from from a Mashrek perspective, uh, we are and any regional bank for that matter, ECA you can never match an ECA funding, right? Uh, however, um, you know, just thinking a bit to uh, a bit forward. Um, the new uh, BAL3 and the IFRS requirements are coming in uh, in the banking system where capital will come at a premium, right? And with these ECA uh, financing or the ECA wraps, um, they, they give you certain relaxation on capital. So it, it all remains to be seen how, how uh, uh, you know, um, difficult the capital would be uh, or will it come at a premium going forward as, as the banks evolve. Uh, and and uh, whether they will be seeking capital relief as a result of lending into these structures, and therefore are willing to take a bit, uh, little less return, but at the s at the uh, on on the other hand gain on the capital side. So it's it's an equation which is always evolving. Mm. Uh, for all you know, you may be surprised to see some local banks really started to, to love uh, ECA financing over a period of time. So and the jury is out.